As a spiritual teacher and a spiritual counselor, I've been asked many, many times throughout my career, Mark, how do you remember to use all this stuff that you know? Well, that's sort of what the book Words of Grace is about. Those graces came to me, of course, through the work of Carolyn Mace, uh, her work with sacred contracts and entering the castle and Defy Gravity were such pointers for me. And to be honest with the work that I do as a spiritual counselor and a professional intuitive and so many people, I am their witch that a spiritual practice is just essential for my daily work, career, vocation, physical, financial survival, and mental sanity. So for me, prayer is a survival thing. You know, I'm a student and a teacher of A Course in Miracles. And if you ever look at it, if you ever go into The Course in Miracles, the first chapter is the 50 Principles of Miracles. And I have pretty much memorized principle number 11, close to verbatim as I usually get though. Prayer is a medium of miracles, a means of communication between creation and creator. Through prayer, love is received, and through miracles, love is expressed. Now, there's a lot to unpack there, but I will say that hits something in me so strong that I actually quoted in the book, Words of Grace. Uh, that one really changed me. So yeah, for me, prayer became part of my daily regimen. Sometimes, if not often, before my eyes even open in the morning, I'm in prayer. But I have also learned that excessive spiritual busy work is not necessarily the answer either. So it's not about I have to polish myself so shiny before I am able to dot 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 or will experience dot dot dot, but rather to say, all right, well then how can I make this in a way fun? Because grace is not about busy work. Grace is a divine substance that is all around you that you're just tuning yourself to. So when people ask me, how do I remember? Here's one of the many ways I remember. Touchstones and totems. I have so many crystals, gems, and minerals, and pieces of jewelry that I've had throughout my career. I started really, really young. Uh, in, in metaphysical retail in 1988 in Porter Square, Massachusetts. So I have crystals that I have used as touchstones, all sorts of different things, not always necessarily aligned with the chakra color or the, the energy power of the stone, but just ones that I really feel called to. And I just hold them and I pray for grace. I, literally the words that are written in the book are inspired, but I take those prayers and they flow from me in different ways every single time, so it's never really the same prayer twice. So I'll use a touchstone. But then there's my totems, my jewelry. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a silver jewelry. I don't want to say addict, but I mean, I'm a witch. I like fashion and function all in one thing, and jewelry does that in so many different ways for me and for many in the magical community abroad. But to know that you can have a ring of the grace of humility, perhaps shaped like a shield, because humility is the shield against humiliation. Maybe for the grace of healing, something for the heart chakra, a pendant around your neck, a malachite and emerald, if you have it like that. But little things that even in the moment, that you may not say the word, but the intention to touch the touchstone or even Notice the ring, the earring, the bracelet, the pendant, the cuff link. And know that grace is always with you. And you'll find that prayer is not always about lighting a candle and saying words. There are many different expressions of prayer. But remember, it is a means of communication between us, the creation, and the divine, the creator. And the more you experience grace, with or without words, the 
more you realize that there is no true separation between the two. Hope this helps. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed as always. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.